Star weekend in style with the team. So awesome. About to meet up with my lady. Just dropped my phone. We just getting in. Everyone say hey. 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 <laughs> no, I told you it's for the YouTube channel. <laughs> Shout out to LaChina Robinson, WNBA and college basketball analyst and reporter at ESPN for welcoming us to the 2019 oh NBA Women's and Basketball Operations Forum at All Star Weekend. I'm personally excited about this event. I have the privilege of covering women's college basketball as well as the WNBA for ESPN. When I walk into those gyms, I get to spend time with the women who are our leaders for tomorrow. The question they always ask me is, what can I do next after basketball is over? The truth is, they want to be you. The conversations we have today and the professional advancements of our panel and audience will impact the opportunities for young women who are up next. Let's go ahead and get started. We have a great program planned for you. First up, we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with NBA Hall of Famer Grant Hill. Then we will have a very distinguished panel of women leaders that will talk to us about how they got a seat at the table. And that panel will include Kelly Crosscoff, Linda Lucchetti, Stephanie Reddy, and Jamil Wyden. We will then learn how to own and leverage our voice in a professional development session with the dynamic Ms. Audra Bohannon. And our final panel discussion today is titled Learning from Our Leaders, Why Being a Champion is Great for the Game. And that panel will include Mitch Kupchak and Michael Glanzendorf. But first, to open our program, please join me in welcoming the NBA Commissioner, Adam Silver. Thank you, China. Um, and it's great to be here, and I know this is going to be the first of many similar forums. And some of you may have been there. We had um, both a meeting first at the league with our employees focused on women's issues at the beginning of the season, but then in January, when we had our mid-year marketing meetings with larger the business people, we had a similar type meeting um, in, in Miami, you know, great attendance. And coming out of that meeting, uh, Laura Stewart, our, our head of diversity and inclusion, along with Kathy Behrens and Eric Hutchison and Myron Spruell, runs uh, basketball operations, said, why aren't we doing something similar on the basketball side? And here we are, and I know, um, I was about to say success has many, um, fathers, and then Kathy Burton said, success has many mothers. <laughs> expression. So I know a lot of people all came up with this idea around the same time, but I'll say one thing I've learned when, when it comes to issues like diversity and inclusion, I've learned this from Oris, it's, it's not just about best intentions, frankly, and I, and I have no doubt that people at the league, you know, the vast majority of people in leadership positions have best intentions, but unless you put in place processes, pipelines, programs like these, it just seemingly doesn't happen, and, and I've learned that over the long term. This was my favorite part of the forum. If you could write a letter to your young self, what would you say? Dear Stephanie, you've always been a rule follower, and that's great, but do not stay in the box others try to put you in. It's okay to be the only girl on the basketball court at the park, again. It's okay to be the only girl in the room talking hoops. It's definitely okay to stay up well past midnight on a school night to watch college basketball being played on the West Coast. Who cares if the guys, the non-hoop heads, your age thinks it's weird 
that you get all of the basketball magazines and read them from cover to cover before most people even know they're out. I'm dating myself a little bit with that. <laughs> Pulitzer Prize winning historian Laurel Thatcher Ulrich wrote, quote, well-behaved women seldom make history. Think about that. I don't think she meant to wholeheartedly disregard rules and laws for the sake of misbehaving. I think she wants us as women to forget the societal norms that people in power like to place on us. Forget the labels and the stereotypes. If you are passionate about something, pursue it at all costs. If there is no foreseeable path to your success, create one. A few words to live by. Always follow your heart, but use your brain as your guide and trust your instincts. Set and meet your own standards. Hard work and organization will help you get there and will always be your calling cards. Always treat people the way you want to be treated. The boys will come and go, and most will come back begging. <laughs> the one you deserve will find you and cherish you and hold you up with more support than you think you will need. Goals. Keep them. Change and adjust them. Claim them. Achieve them again and again. Always remember what a very popular entertainer by the name of Beyonce famously asked and answered in a hit song. Who runs the world? Girls! Next up, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Grant Hill, moderated by Kalena Azabuki, talking about how important it is for men and players of organizations to lean in for the women of the organization more discussion like this and this is great we have a lot of women we need more men in here too you know and and, and i think as we continue to evolve and grow this but um i, I do think that we have some some good players who, who mean well who uh, can recognize when things aren't right and are willing to speak up and on those various causes and, and someone who's part of that that family makes me proud that, that we have players in the league like that today Definitely. and understand their platform uh, understand um, the power in their voice, the power in their tweet, uh, but the, the opportunity and the ability to really speak out and, and, and speak up. And we've seen that in both leagues with current players right now who've done that. And, and you know, and sometimes I feel like my generation dropped the ball a little bit. You know, we didn't, we weren't maybe as outspoken as players today, and there may be a lot of reasons for that. Um, but I think one of the things that's interesting is the access to information. So talk to us about where this passion for this issue comes from in terms of your family. I know you have two daughters, and the older one was actually involved in the Junior NBA World Championships this summer, and she's kind of taking a liking to basketball. So, so where did this passion come from? Well, I, mean, I think for me, it starts, it starts uh, you know, with, I think first with my, my grandmother. My grandmother, uh, my maternal grandmother uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, was the first black, uh, first African-American dental lab technician in New Orleans. So she made false teeth. It's a fancy way of saying she made false teeth in her, uh, in her, in her home. And, uh, and so just sort of seeing her, uh, her drive, her, uh, her intellect, her ability to problem solve, uh, really all that she did in terms of building her practice. But seeing that as an example and having that as a role model for me, uh, I think it continued on, of course, with my mother, who is the busiest retired person I know, uh, <laughs> but anyone who, who knows uh, Janet Hill, she's a force of nature. Uh, but being around strong women, uh, I think, and understanding the value and importance is something that you know I've seen my entire life. Of course, uh, um, you know I, I certainly overachieved in terms of marrying my wife, and uh, obviously, um, you know her her story, her journey. Uh, she has a, a major uh, health issue. She's diagnosed with MS, and, uh, and she was diagnosed at a time when I was going through some tough times. And I thought about quitting and giving up, and, and sort of seeing her fight and her spirit. Uh, she was like, you better get back out there. And, uh, and so, uh, but our, you know, I'm surrounded by strong women who are competent, who are capable, um, who I look up to uh, and who I admire. And so. Miss Audra Bohannon took us through a deep thinking exercise to assess and find the power in our voice. And one of the things I want to leave you with is that sometimes people say, Audra, I don't have the confidence 
or what is it that I really want if I want to take it up? And my, my thought to you is, if you think about the fact that you can or can learn, and that you're willing to have the courage and you put forth the effort, there is no stopping you because you get real clear of understanding what is required, and it's not just your technical skills. You understand what is required to build a strong system of relationships. You understand what is required to understand how to navigate and move through the organization, and you understand how to use your influence to get the outcome that you seek. I wish each and every one of you the very best, and thank you for going on the journey. Last but not least, a conversation with Michael Reinsdorf and Mitch Kupchak. It was refreshing to see someone as powerful and with a winning background like Mitch Kupchak to really begin to understand how important diversity and inclusion is. He has been in the game for a really long time, and so he's seen the changing of the league. And for him to openly and transparently state that he has a lot more to think about after three hours was awesome. I only caught a few sound bites, but I hope you enjoy. I've always thought I, knew, I, I know the right thing to do. And um, yeah, you always try to do the right thing. But the last two, two and a half hours, it, it just brings it, it's, you know, it's a lot to think about. And um, for me, this has been a, a great two and a half hours. Now I started in management um, in 1986 in Los Angeles, and I was there till 2016. And when I started, uh, we had 11 players. We had a head coach, an assistant coach, and a trainer, and, and that was it. Um, there, there was no um, you know, diversity. Um, and then over the years, you know, and you know, that's a long time, and things you know, began to happen slowly. And you know, I remember eight or 10 years ago, you know, the thought to hire a physical therapist who was a woman. Okay, now, now that's, today it's nothing. In fact, here in Charlotte, you know, where I now work, we have you know, multiple people that work, uh, multiple women that work in, with the team, our team psycholog psychologists. You know, in Los Angeles, when I left, we had assistant trainer, a therapist, um, uh, PT, and, you know, just multiple, but at the time, you know, the thought to introduce a woman, you know, to a professional basketball team, locker room, it was, it was alien, okay? And this was 15, 18 years ago, and I look to where we are today. And to me, it's about, you know, the breaking down the barriers and the stereotypes, and then most important, the opportunity. You know, if you get the opportunity, you know, I've seen that you know, there really is no difference, and you could end up hiring the right person. So uh, I thought I knew that, and I thought I understood how important it was, um, but like I said just a couple of minutes ago, I have a lot more to think about now after two and a half, three hours than I did three hours ago. To wrap things up, I'd like to leave you with some gems from Stephanie. She was vibrant, beautiful, and confident. Although there were many great speakers on the panel who had wonderful things to say, like Linda Lucchetti, the Senior Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Utah Jazz, I will hold her words in my heart forever. She was confident, sure of herself, but also transparent about being afraid, and I loved that. But here is a message that I thought was super, super inspiring to end the conference. I hope you all enjoy. Quote, but essentially it's just luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And that's been my entire career. You know, people, oh, you're so lucky, you're so lucky. Perhaps, but when the phone rang, I was ready. My resume was updated, I had put the work in, I had worked my way up to that point where I felt comfortable and confident so that yes, maybe I didn't pursue a particular job, but when the time came to talk about that job, I was prepared to take on the job. So that's the one thing. And the other thing is one of my best friends is a, a CEO of a company. And she tells me this all the time, so I'm gonna pass it on to you guys. Do not be afraid to ask for a raise. She said that in her capacity, she's always hiring people, <clears throat> excuse me, management level, everything. And that men within the company, when a job opens up, they will apply. 
They will go for that job, even if they're not qualified for the job. They will put in for the job. Women who are already in that company will sit and think, I'm doing a good job, they'll notice, they'll tap me on the shoulder. They won't even put in for the job. They'll expect that because they deserve it and they've worked hard, that they will get the job. We all wish that's the way the world worked. So my advice to everyone in this room and pass it on to all of your friends, pursue what you want. If you deserve it and you've been working hard, ask for it. And if it's a raise and you think you deserve it, ask for it. Thanks for watching. And if you have any thoughts, leave some comments below about diversity and inclusion and how important you think it is in today's workforce, not only in a male dominated industry, but in all industries. Also, if you wanna learn more, follow me on Instagram at the Shay Dawson Experience.